and welcome to Name Hero. I'm Ryan, the founder and CEO. Today I want to talk about how to register and how to set up your private name servers if you're a reseller. And I also want to explain just what private name servers are in the first place. So let's head over to our reseller page and I'm going to show you our different packages. We offer four different reseller packages, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. And each one of these allow for private name servers. And you can see this inside of our reseller toolkit. You can see private name servers, NS1 and NS2. So if you've never resold hosting before or you don't know what private name servers are, these are basically what connects a domain to hosting. So for example, if you're a reseller of Name Hero and your customer has their domain at GoDaddy or Namecheap or another registrar, they want to connect to your hosting at Name Hero. Well, in order for that customer to do so, they have to update their name servers at GoDaddy or Namecheap or wherever to point to your hosting. So at Name Hero, for an example, if someone comes and signs up for our hosting services here, once they sign up for one of these packages, we provide them with a set of name servers, normally NS1 or NS10 or NS60.namehero.net and then NS61 or NS62.namehero.net. And that's what connects the domain to the hosting. So that way you can have your domain wherever and then your hosting wherever. The two are not dependent on each other. Now at Name Hero, I do recommend having your domain and hosting in one spot, especially for our resellers, because it makes it easier to set up your private name servers. Now, of course, if your customers, you know, we've seen this for a lot, you know, they don't want to have everything under one umbrella. And that's understandable. I mean, I guess. Um, so you, regardless, they can do that. But it has to be, both of these things have to be set up in order for, for hosting to function. So I'm going to show you if you're a current reseller or maybe you're, you're thinking about becoming a reseller, I'm just going to show you how to set this up and kind of what it looks like so it makes a lot more sense. So if you're following along, I'm just going to log in to my demo account here at Name Hero. Password. Whoops. Well, maybe I'll get in here. All right, so now we're in here. Um, my dashboard might look a lot like your dashboard. I've got a couple demo accounts and domains, so you might have different, or you will have different numbers depending on your products and services with us. Um, but first, let's go look at our reseller package. So I'm gonna use this gold reseller account with wsphost.com as an example. You can see here, when you load this up, the private name servers for this account are ns1.wsphost.com and ns2.wsphost.com. So these are dependent on what domain you signed up with with your reseller hosting. So for my example, it was wsphost.com. So that's what my name servers are. So, you know, whatever you signed up with us using, that's by default what your private name servers are set up to be. So we often will tell new customers or customers that are about to sign up, you know, use a domain that you feel comfortable, you know, giving that to your customers. That way that, you know, it kind of makes sense to them and makes sense to you as well. You know, oftentimes we'll sometimes see people sign up with a reseller account and they'll use a client's domain as their primary domain. Well, of course, that doesn't work because that client doesn't want their domain used for everyone's name servers. So then they need to change it. So just keep that in mind. And, you know, if you're if you already have a website for your business and you're just looking to add reseller hosting as an additional service, you know, I don't think it's a bad idea to have a domain that's just used for name servers. You know, that way that, you know, you just know for sure that domain's used for your uh, primary primary name servers and to kind of not mess with that, you know, with anything else that you're doing. I've had instances before where, you know, people will use their primary company domain that they're already using and they might set it up or they might forget. And then later on down the road, they kind of forget where everything is. And if they don't always keep those changes, you know, let's say that they are making some modifications to their current site and they accidentally delete the records, uh, then they run into problems. So we don't want that to happen to you. So if you, you know, kind of use that at your discretion, whichever fits your business um, the best. So, and even, you know, with Name Hero, we we use namehero.net instead of namehero.com for one of those reasons. You know, that we know that namehero.net, that's the um, domain that we use for our shared hosting name servers. And so we know that, you know, whenever we're making modifications, that that's where those are going to be, not on the main namehero.com domain. So, you know, if you have a .com already, maybe that's a good opportunity to use a .net or even a .org if needed. So, um, you know, just remember that. All right, so if you look down here, you're also gonna see a link called use our name servers. So if I click this, 
it brings up a box to where I can use ns65.securecloud2 and ns66.securecloud2. So we put these in here for customers that don't want to use private name servers. You know, regardless if, you know, maybe they're registered, the domain's registered somewhere else and they don't want to set them up and they just want to go, um, they can use these and you can as well with your account. Um, Secure Cloud 2 is one of our white labeled domains. So if you type this in your browser, you don't get Name Hero. It doesn't say anything about Name Hero. And so it's, it's an option for those that, you know, don't want to use their private name servers, um, but want to have white labeled ones so it doesn't track back to Name Hero. So that is a, a viable option as well if you want to do that. Now to use those, you just simply will input these into your WHMCS or give it to your customers. Um, and that way they know which name servers are gonna be used. Now I wanna show you though how to set these up because that's um, you know, the real purpose of this video. So if your domain is registered with us at Name Hero, it's, it's very easy. You should have a link called Manage Domain. And if you did transfer your domain to us, that takes about three to five business days. Now, if you just registered your domain at GoDaddy or somewhere else, n names that have been registered cannot be transferred until they're 60 days or older. So if you register a new domain, you're gonna have to wait to do that transfer. But once that domain is transferred in, you also have this manage domain um, link they'll populate. So I'm just gonna click this and I'm gonna bring it up in another tab here just so we can kind of go back and forth because we're gonna need these IP addresses. So the name here, this is what the domain looks like when you're managing it. And you'll notice under manage, there's a section called private name servers. So I'm gonna click it. And this is where we set this up. So when we talk about registering name servers, sometimes this frustrates people because they don't understand. They say, well, what, my domain's registered. What do you mean you're registered? You actually have to bind the name servers to the hosting. So just like you would changing a website's um, name servers, you have to bind these name servers specifically to the domain. It's an added layer of security to make sure that someone's not impersonating your domain, You know, someone that has nothing to do with your domain. So anyways, to do this, we you just have to type in ns1 and then the IP address. And so if I go over here, the IP address is here and then we'll just paste it. And then we click save. Now I've already set these up for this domain, so it's gonna kick back that it already exists. Um, but of course, if it didn't, it would just save it. Uh, and likewise, you need to do ns2 and then we're gonna copy this here and paste this here. Click save. Now, when you order your account at Name Hero, if you chose to register a new domain, our order processing team, we actually go through and look for this. And if you haven't done it, we just go ahead and set it up for you by default. So if it, you know, if you're watching this video and it already says this, that means our team's most likely already taken care of it for you. So you're you're probably going to be all set. And again, it doesn't do anything, you know, if it kicks this error message, there's nothing to worry about. Okay, so once you do that, once you've registered the name servers, you then need to click name servers on the manage menu and make sure your domain's using them. That's a step that's often overlooked, you know, and, and me too, you know, I understand that you know, once you register them, you kind of get the idea that it's done, but you actually need to make sure your domain's using these. And so you can see this one is. So if this is, you know, ns1.something else or whatnot, you just change it to the ones you just registered. Now, once all that's done, you've, you've satisfied the domain side, the domain side of things. But now you need to go back to the hosting side and make sure your hosting is set up that way. So again, at Name Hero, if you registered your domain with us and registered your reseller package, our order team is going to go through and set this up. And um, if you've already, if you beat them to it, which they're really quick, but still, if you beat them to it, um, they'll go back and at least check. But what I need to do is go into Web Host Manager and make sure these records are set up correctly. So inside of Web Host Manager, I'll just type in DNS in the search box, and you'll see I've got an edit DNS zone link. So I'll click it. Now, this is a new account, so I only have one DNS zone, that's for WSP host. I'll click edit, and there's three places I need to edit this. One is right up at the top. So right here, it needs to say ns1.wsphost.com. You know, whatever your first name server is should go there. And so if you, you know, if you just set this account up and it's not changed, it might have our white labeled name servers there. So you'd want to change it. Now, when you type in ns1.yourdomain.com, you have to put a period after it. That's a correct format of a DNS file. So just make sure you put a period after that. And then we'll go down here a little bit to this first NS record and we make sure it says it there. And so it does. 
So we're good. Now the second thing is we want to make sure that the second one is showing, ns2.wsphost.com, period. Okay, so as long as you have these three showing, it's NS1, then NS1 and NS2, and then we have to make sure we have the A records. And so these are right here. So NS1, NA, dot, and this is the first IP address here. See, it matches. And then NS2, and it's this second IP address here. It's right here. So if you don't have these records, then you might run into issues. So you would just need to add them under add new entries. This is where you would just type these in. NS1, NS2, and you'd select, it's an A record, it's an A record, and then you would just copy and paste these IP addresses. And you'd probably get them from over here because they wouldn't be inside of here if they um, were already set up. So this is where you would do it. And then you would just click save. Once again, I'm not gonna save because I already have them added here. So that's how they're set up. And if you go to basic web host manager setup, you can see that it automatically has them set to be used on new accounts. So when you create a new customer, you don't have to go back through and edit all that. It's gonna automatically do it going forward. It's just that initial setup that you have to make sure. And also if you decide, hey, I'm not gonna use private name servers, I'm gonna use the white labeled ones provided, then you would just click here and here at name servers from root or you could specifically set them here. It's however you wanna do it. But by default, the private name servers is what people want to use. Now, let's go talk about Web Host Manager really quick, or WHMCS. Um, this is what most resellers use. This is a free billing and automation system that it's free with a couple of our reseller accounts, or actually three of our reseller accounts now. And when a customer signs up on your website, WHMCS will provide that customer with the appropriate name servers for their package. So I wanna, I wanna show you where you set those up to make sure they're getting the correct name servers. Because again, when they sign up, they have to connect their domain to your hosting. So under setup, if I go to servers, it's under products and services, servers. So it's kind of three levels, setup, product and services, servers. We'll click that here. I'll click this icon right here, this kind of modify. And if you go down, you'll see name servers. And this is where those should be input, NS1, NS2, and then the IP address for each. And again, you get these from right here. So all I'll do now is just make sure they're saved, which they already are, and then you're all set. So now when customers sign up for your hosting, they will get the appropriate name servers. Now if your business grows, which I hope it does, um, you're gonna have more reseller accounts. And that means you're gonna add a new server and then you also have the ability, once you do that, after this is all said and done, your username, password, and token, and all that stuff, um, to set up additional name servers. So this allows you, when you're reselling, you don't just have to resell off one account. You know, one account's good for a while, but then it starts to, you know, you start to get customers on it, and you need another one. And so you can use WHMCS to go through as many reseller accounts as you need. You know, our top resellers have 30, 40, 50 accounts all inside one WHMCS. And it's most likely going to be that same way with you. So that's how you would add additional ones or set that up. So that's private name servers. I mean, it's not that complicated. Um, if for some reason, it still does cause some confusion. And I think most of the time that confusion happens because the domain's elsewhere. So let's talk about that really quick. If your domains that go to out of your name cheap or wherever, I mean, I can continue naming companies, but, um, and you want to move it to name hero, but you want to get started right now. Well, you can set those private name servers up at GoDaddy or Namecheap or whatnot in their interface. And when it transfers over, that those same name servers will transfer. It kind of comes with it. Um, so feel free to, I know GoDaddy has a good help desk tutorial um, and so does Namecheap. And of course you can ask their support team as well. The thing is, we can't help you if it's not inside a Name Heroes interface. You know, we don't want to go logging into your GoDaddy account or your Namecheap account. You know, that's up to you to do on your end. So that's why I always suggest, and again, it's not because I, I want to get the extra $12.98 or however much a domain costs um, from you, it's so we can easily set these up for you. Again, if the domain and hostings together, our order processing team can easily go in there, register the name servers, make sure it's updated, and you can go about your day. But again, when it's separate, that's when it makes it a little bit more complicated. 
But that's all there is to it. It is essential though that these are set up correctly because if they're set up incorrectly, it, it, you can have some weird stuff happen. You know, sometimes the site might load, sometimes it might not. You know, sometimes your customers will sign up and they'll get all these weird errors on their site and they'll wonder what's going on. This is the first thing that we train our support techs to check. Like look at the DNS. Is all the DNS records clear? And you'd be surprised about how many times we check that and see that there's an issue. You know, there's a, a mismatch record, um, something wasn't registered. And, you know, they thought that some people thought just because they updated their name servers that it registered it for them. And that's why I wanted to get this video out to set, you know, to show you that there's a two part process. They're setting it up on the domain side, the actual registrar of the domain, as well as the hosting side. And they both have to be done. Take about five minutes, takes about five minutes to do both, but they still have to be completed in that fashion because if not, then you could run into issues. So let me know, feel free to comment on this video if you have any questions or concerns about this. Be more than happy to, to help you out with that and provide some you know, additional resources. And as well, you know, always hit up our team if you have problems registering them or setting them up and our team will kind of guide you in the right direction or even set it up for you as long as you know, everything's with us. So thanks so much for watching and using us here at namehero.com.